of Jesus. Atmosphere of Jesus. Atmosphere of Jesus. For there's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible, no disease incurable. There's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible and no disease. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. You are a great God. You are an awesome God. You are a God who never fails your people. Thank you that we are here to learn from you, to learn your word, your word that never fails, your word that can shift and change anything and everything. Your word says all things are naked and defenseless before the one to whom we must account. Thank you that all things are naked and defenseless before the word of God. Thank you that your word is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit, of the joints and of the marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart of man. You said, is not my word like a hammer? Is it not like a fire that can break in pieces the mountains, O oh God? Thank you that your word says, through him all things were kinomied. Through him all things came into existence, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that what you unveil to us is creative power to shift things according to heaven, O oh God. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what is your glorious inheritance in us as saints. And what is that incomparable great power available for us as believers? The same power which you demonstrated in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenly realms. I thank you for open scriptures, open understanding and open eyes that we may behold the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for rhema which will be imparted to each and every person. Thank you that nobody will leave here like they came. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the glorious church say amen. amen hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the lord praise the lord praise the lord greetings in the wonderful name of our lord jesus christ amen hallelujah it's beautiful to be in the house of god um to come together to hear the word of God, to learn the word of God. Please close the door. Uh, whoever is coming will we'll just open the door. Hallelujah. It's beautiful to come together to learn the word of God. We believe the word. I believe the word. Do you believe the word? Yes. I believe the word. Um, um, David says, I would have fainted unless your word had been my delight. I would have failed in life unless I had the word, you know. Um, I mean, in this life, and it's not just because of issues of, like, your prosperity. I mean, just for your health, you need the word. <laughs> uh, just for your health. You know, when you see how much sickness and disease ravages people and affects people, um, COVID should have been a, a lesson that people need the word, you know, because there comes a, pl a place where medical science fails, you know, but the word does not fail. Hallelujah. The word does not fail. The Bible says, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. That means you will not regret it if you ever believe in him. If you ever trust in him, you will never be ashamed. Hallelujah. You will never be ashamed. Looks like today we are competing with these guys here. But it's okay. Hallelujah. It's okay. That's why we must keep that door shut. You can focus, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, whoever believes in him will not be ashamed. They will not, you know, they won't regret it. When he met Joshua, and Joshua was in a difficult position because, I mean, imagine... You know, when, when, when my wife was ministering the other week, you know, I just, I got a glimpse of how difficult that moment was. The fact that, I mean, you are taking over from Moses. <laughs> I mean, 
do you understand the depth of that? You are taking over from Moses. Here's a guy, for 40 years, he has led the nation. 40, 40. With miracles, demonstrations of power. You know, I mean, I mean, Moses was the closest thing to God. You know, in fact, he was God and he had a prophet. You know, and here you are, you must take over from him. And the only thing you know to do is battle. You know, that's all Joshua knew. He knew how to fight wars. He was not a miracle worker. He didn't understand the dynamics of the supernatural. He was a recipient of the supernatural, but he had never wielded the supernatural. He knew what it is for a man to stand at the top and raise his hands. And from then on, the power just flows. But he did not know the key to releasing it. And the man who he's, been, he's taking over from, I mean, the, 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 the level is high. Moses set a high standard. And now you must take over from Moses. And when, he, when he's supposed to take over from Moses, number one, Moses has just died. Our leader just died. And we don't know where he's buried. So you can understand the state of affairs, right? The state of the nation. Our leader just died and we don't, because he went to the mountain and he said, I'm going. And he left. He never came back again. And God himself buried him. And when you study the book of Jude, you realize that he resurrected. So his body was taken. So you can't find Moses' body on the face of the planet. So the nation is in a catastrophe. People are sad that their leader is gone. And God appears to him. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. You know, he's dead. And that's how Joshua knew that you must move forward. That guy is not coming back. The guy you saw going to the mountain, he's not coming back. Moses, my servant, is dead. But when he says he's dead, he says, I un he didn't say, I understand it's difficult. I understand it's tough. Uh, 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 you know, just mourn for a bit. No, he says, arise. It's almost like God is heartless towards the emotions of Joshua. And he says, arise, you, and then he says, lead these people. And he says, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. He says, you will, and then think about it. Né? His task is not to do what Moses did. It's to go further. What, what, what demands upon a man? What demands upon a man? To do bigger than Moses. <laughs> My God. To go further than Moses. What a demand, right? What a demand. But God says to him, he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He says, I will not forsake you. Then he says, I won't fail you. So the I won't fail you part is not just I won't fail you. You, you must understand the context in which God said, I won't fail you. Because the man was shaking in his boots. For the position that he was taking over. And that same God has come to us, right? He has come to us in the person of the word. And he says that. He says, I will not forsake you. And he says, I will not fail you. If you can put your absolute trust in the word of God, the word will not fail. The word of God does not fail. Hallelujah. The word of God does not what? The word does not fail. It does not fail. And that's why you must, before you engage it, you must engage it as a system that does not fail. The Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. He's saying this thing is stronger than heaven. It's stronger than the ground you are standing on. It's more powerful than anything you have ever met. It is the force of creation itself. The Bible says all things were made by him and for him. And the Bible says all things hold together by him. The Bible says he sustains all things. He maintains all things by the word of his power. And so that word is what we are learning. You see that? We are not just learning. Uh, this is not just a time to learn religious talk. No, we are learning the ways of the kingdom of God. We are learning the principles of the kingdom of God. That if you would have them, nothing shall stand against you successfully. Amen. Hallelujah. If you would have these principles, nothing shall stand against you successfully. And this is why Jesus taught them in 
parables. He taught them in parables because he says, if they ever know, you know, I was studying the word mystery because it's the biggest thing, you know. You know, Joshua Solomon made the word mystery a big thing now, you know. Um, you know, the mystery of this, the mystery of this. Everything is a mystery, you know. You know, but it's biblical. The word mystery is biblical, you know. Uh, there's the mystery of godliness. There's the mystery of the faith. We're going to get into that, right? The mystery of faith. Not today, but somewhere along this teaching series, right? The mystery of... Uh, 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 then there is a, yeah? There's, great is the mystery of godliness. Then he speaks about the mystery of marriage. He says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Then Paul says, I show you a mystery, right? We shall not all sleep, you know, but we shall be translated in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you know? So there are different mysteries. Then there's mystery Babylon, you know? So the word mystery is not foreign to the scriptures. You see that. What the word mystery means, right? It means a hidden truth. That's a mystery. It means a hidden truth. So it's the truth that has been intentionally hidden because of the advantage it gives for those who carry it. A mystery is what? So a mystery is not a deep revelation. Amen. Amen. No, uh, by, by, by what people think deep revelation is. You know, the, the, it's actually simple, right? But w how Jesus did it, he complicated it for intentionally so that men can get it. Because if men could get it, God is compelled to act once you have it. That's the power of a mystery. Once you have it, right? Once you have it, God himself is obliged to do it. Think about, think about the mystery of fasting and prayer as it pertains to the heart of God, right? Fasting and prayer is, is, the, is, is a mystery for shifting events. If there was a deadline, fasting can change it. If there was a deadline, a, a, a de when I say deadline, I don't mean a deadline like work deadline. I mean a deadline. You are dead. The key to shift a, 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 written, a written death sentence is fasting and prayer. Even a written death sentence, not just written death sentences by Satan, but by God himself. God comes to the most wicked king to ever arise in Israel. He says, listen, you are dead. You are a dead man. And when he tells him that you are a dead man, the Bible says when Ahab heard that God was going to kill him, the Bible says he humbled himself in fasting and prayer. And then he put on sackcloth and he fasted. God comes to Elijah. He says, Elijah, do you see Ahab? <laughs> Listen, he's wicked. God knows his wickedness. It's not a mystery. His wickedness is not a mystery. It's public. And God changes his mind. He says, I won't kill you, but I'll kill your children. And here's the power of it. If Ahab had done another fasting for his next child, it would have shifted. That's the power of it. But here's the thing. Without morality, by a principle of the kingdom, a mad power shifted. I'm trying to show you the power of these things. It, 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 it can... It can, so, what God does, because he understands the force of his mysteries, he hides them. He hides them. Because when the sinner has it, even if he's not saved, God must do it. Huh? He must do it because it's a, it's a hidden secret. These are what you call the ancient... You know, there was something that happened in the days of Noah, Right? You know the angels that descended and slept with the daughters of men? Eh? The issue was not just that, right? One of the things they did is that they taught these secrets. Because these were creatures that lived in the realms of the spirit. And they understood the operations of God and the mysteries of the powers of the age to come. And they came down and they taught men how to manipulate the earth. And God says, ay, 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 ay. No, it's too much now. 
I must remove this generation that knows these secrets. He had to remove them because if humanity had carried on, you, you have to understand. Languta Mara. I'm trying to show you that what we are learning is eternal truth. And even God himself respects any man who has it. Look, here's another mystery. The mystery of oneness and unity, right? And vision. The Bible says the whole earth was of one speech, one language. They saw one thing and they said, let's do this. The Bible says God said, he, they can. Bazalan, ne? They didn't have the Holy Ghost. But God says they can get to heaven. Uh They could get to heaven without the Holy Ghost. He says, let us build a top, a a temple or a tower that can reach to heaven. And the Bible says God came to see it. And he says, listen, we can't stop these people. The only way is to disrupt the mystery, not them. The only way was to disrupt the mystery. Then he says, let me confuse them. Because that's the only way. For as long as they have that thing, he himself is obliged to respect them. Think about how Satan was cast out of heaven. Right? He was cast out of heaven because of his angelic rebellion. But when Adam, when Adam ate and he listened, here's the thing, right? The Bible says the issue of you're like but how did they eat and then they give satan power the the bible says he whom you obey you are his servant obedience is immediate submission so by spiritual law when they listen to satan they submitted to him and everything that they have and satan understands that so as soon as they did that all of a sudden satan was no longer functioning by angelic authority he had adamic authority understanding Adamic authority, the Bible says one day when the sons of God presented themselves, he entered and no angel could refuse him. Why? Spiritual laws. As a fallen angel, he cannot get in. But with Adamic authority, he's welcomed. (laughs) He's welcomed. What am I showing you? I'm showing you the laws work. They what? They work even for Satan. So Jesus says, I speak to them in parables. Because I want to give you truth. But in wanting to give you truth, I don't want those. So what it, 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 it is a hidden truth reserved for the initiated. So, it is like a trade secret that you are only allowed to have it when you are initiated. So, Jesus spoke it in such a way that only the initiated could access it. Are you understanding me? So, everything is talking. He's talking, but he's revealing eternal truth. He's talking, but he's revealing eternal truth. For example, the, the, the parable of the sower, right? It is, it is the parable of fruitfulness. What you are learning is the secret of how to be fruitful in the kingdom. Are you learning something? Hmm. I want to get into my message, but the, the, the foundation is so important, right? In this teaching, Bazalana, Satan shows us, not Satan, Jesus. Jesus shows us, he says, he says, He's talking. Jesus. The sovereign Lord is talking. And as I'm talking right now, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Spirit, he says only 25% will bear fruit. (laughs) He says, as I'm talking right now, only 25% are going to get fruit from this. But let me help you. He says, there is no name written that Sane is going to be fruitful. Timothy is not going to be fruitful. There is no such thing. But this is what goes on in every congregation. That only 25% get the fruit of the word. 
So he teaches this parable to show people how not to be part of the 75. So the teaching is to exempt you from the 75. That if you would listen to it, you would not be part of the 75. You would be part of the 25%. So you choose. Are you part of the 25 or are you part of the 75? It's a choice. Right now, all of us, pastor, apostle, uh, corporate worker, whoever, all of us are under the same canopy, right? And right now, there is decisions being made. The anointing of fruitfulness is lingering in the spirit for 25% of you. <laughs> Jesus, if Jesus couldn't beat it, I can't. <laughs> if Jesus couldn't beat, it, yeah, like, what, what, what you, the best that the Lord of heaven and earth could do was 25 percent. <laughs> so you are here, right? You choose. Am I in the 75? Or am I in the 25? But even in the 25. <laughs> but even in the in the 25, Bazalan, there is another soul within that entire hundred percent. There is he says, Jesus, according to him, he says, then within the entire hundred percent, only eight point three percent will get the fullness of the word. So, you must make a decision. After you've entered the 25, at least enter the 25. At least enter the 25. I'm part of the 25. Then, when you've, when you've seen I'm part of the 25, go further. Because he says some gave had 30 some 60, some 100. The best preacher in the world could only get 8% of people to get, to get full fruit. <laughs> so as a pastor, that frees me as well. <laughs> that frees me as well. But with the best teacher. So, Bazalon, you must make a choice. Hallelujah. You must what? Make a choice. It's not reserved for apostles. Uh, uh, it's not just because they are in the front row. Our front row. It never said front row. It's not, it's, it's not a front row issue. It's not a front row issue. Praise the Lord. It's not a front row issue. It's an issue. Do you satisfy the demands? Here's what that gives me confidence of. You know? Results are not a mistake. Oh, I, love, I love accuracy. Now. I, tell me what to do to get it. I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to guess this time, next time I irahal. Yeah, irahal this time, next time I irahal. One minute I'm having breakthrough, next time I. No, I want constant. I want the realm of mastery where when something is going on, I understand which buttons to press. You see, Jesus says, in this world, you'll have tribulation. So let's think about it. But it, it happens sometimes in this building that the main switch, that the lights go off sharp. Yes, they will go off. But I want to have such knowledge that I know where to do to bring the lights back again. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the person who knows how to bring back the lights again. And if you can, keep them on forever. So we're talking about depositing the word of God through meditation. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? All right. Genesis chapter 24. 
Genesis chapter 25. I shared a story. I shared it with Prophet, I shared it with my wife, and I said, Oh, this, this, I mean. But does the word ever make you smile? Like, I thought that was a No, it's like, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's coming. <laughs> like, I, I literally laugh. And my wife knows. I will, you know. Why are you hearing this? We sleep listening to the word. The, the word. Oh, you will hear it in that house. My God. You will hear it. You will hear it. You will hear it. You will, you will everywhere. It's like there's something. There is a book for you to read. There is a book for it's like the word is everywhere. Wherever you go, you must just you must just be seeing something that will stir up your face. There's no one belief in that house. Does not exist. Sometimes the power of God, sorry to be, you know, uncanny, you know, sorry, 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 you know. Sometimes the power of God, Timothy, is so strong. You are studying and you need to go to the toilet. You take everything and you say, oh God, my God, I can't miss that revelation. Yeah, when revelation is flowing, it has no respect for your stomach. It has no respect for what's going on with your body. I carry it, I take the mad book, I go with it, I say, God, talk some more. No, I'm serious about this thing. You see, for me, I'm convinced, Pastor Mike, I'm, 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 this is life. He says, they are life to those who find them. There are many who don't find them. He says, to Moses, to the children of Israel, it was laws. To Moses, it was life. Have you ever heard of a man called John D. Rockefeller? How many of you have heard? Okay, you've heard the word Rockefeller. <laughs> the Rockefeller Foundation. So the originator is John D. Rockefeller, right? So that man was a tither, right? And uh, he reached where he got to by tithing, right? Because he's got Jewish, you know, heritage. So he was a tither, right? But there came a time, Timothy, at the age of 52, he was diagnosed with Stage four cancer. Stage four cancer. And stage four angry karwata man. They diagnosed him with stage four cancer. The doctor said you will not live. Within the next twelve months you are gone. Where is that testimony hits me? The man took half of his fortune. This is now the richest. Bill Gates has nothing on that man. Eh? All these guys, the Elon Musk, Putin, Bami Abobo, they've got nothing. Yeah, he's the first billionaire. Yeah. In fact, that's how the testimony was even said. He was the first billionaire. He took half of his fortune and he gave to the poor when he had that. Half of it. Gave to the poor. I mean, he's the richest man, so you can imagine he was giving like nobody's business. When he had done that, a man of God came to him. Hey, God says, because you have done this, you will not die. Because I don't have a man like you. If you die, who will then take care of these people? So, for that, you will remain on the earth. <laughs> the man died at 92. Lived for 40 more years. God needed him for another. It would then take God another 40 years. God needed him. Hey, before we a good company, hey, give us 40 years. God said through the man of God, I don't have a man who will take care of these people. You know the Bible says when you give to the poor, you lend to God. Imagine, he stirred up the bowels of God. (laughs) 
<laughs> a death sentence, he changed it. Genesis 24. Say, I will never be broke another day of my life. Sickness has nothing on me. Say, I will not fail. I will not fail. I'm a star in my generation. I'm significant in my generation. I cannot be ignored. Men have been praying. God has answered. By bringing me. I am the answer. To the cry of many. I am the deliverer. To every poor person. Every person. Who is limited. On this earth. I have come. As an answer from God. Imagine if you thought that like that every day. These things that I'm teaching. They will shape you in that manner. They will shape you in that manner. Let's look at the scripture. Um, so meditation, Bazalwana. I'm teaching on meditation. Let's establish meditation. Say meditation. meditation. Say meditation. meditation. So meditation is not an, a, a new age thing. No, it's not a new age thing where you sit and you fold your feet and then you just keep quiet and then you just think about God knows what, you see. That is, that's new age meditation. But this is an ancient principle from the scriptures. It existed from, uh, from, from Genesis, as you will see. It existed from Genesis. And it's one of the secrets of spiritual men, okay? Meditation. If you are going to do anything significant, right, on this earth, you must learn to meditate on the word of God. If you're going to do anything that is impactful, you must learn to meditate on what? On the word of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not, and I'm going to give you scriptures to show you that this thing has been there perpetually in the scriptures, right? And throughout time, and then we're going to look at what God said about it. What does the Bible say are the benefits of meditation? That before I'm not talking about prayer here. I'm just talking about meditation. That if we can just meditate, we would have those results. Because God, God is not scheming us. You understand? This is not a, God is not dangling things before us. No. If he tells you do this and you'll get this, do it and you'll get what he said. You realize a lot of times, men, because what God says is simple, they don't do it. Because men always look for the complicated. 63, 63, 63. All right, verse 63. All right, can we read, read it together? One, two, three, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next verse. One, two, three, go. Yeah. 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 So, so. Okay, next verse, next verse, next verse. One, two, three, go. Yeah. 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 She took her veil and what? Covered herself. Next verse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Marriage was simple in those days, no? <laughs> now look at this, right? I, I want us to learn principles. Amen. Say principles. principles. Right. So when a scripture is written like this. There are principles that you must draw out from the scripture, right? Let's go back to 63. Let's look at the principles. All right, let's read. One, two, three, go. Yeah, yeah. 
Wait, he went out to what? Meditate. The word to meditate here means to muse. It means, right? Uh, uh, it, it, it means to ponder on something. He went out to ponder on something, right? And we know they meditated the word of God, right? Now, it is not meditation. It's not just thinking about something, right? But it is an attitude in thinking, right? It is an attitude where you are thinking, but you are engaging what you are thinking. Hello? You are what? You are engaging what you are thinking. In fact, this word, meditate, it, it, it connotes an idea of the change of your face. That when they would meditate this way, right? Their face would begin to change, right? Because, right? Because of the seriousness of what they were involved in. So, they would be, so, uh, 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 in fact, they give a, there's a, there's a specific, what, 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 what does the Hebrew say? What does the Hebrew say? Yeah. Yes, and then continue with it. What does it say? To meditate. Yeah. 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 There's a word I'm looking for, right? There's a word that I'm looking for there, right? Uh, 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 uh. Yes. Um, okay. Can I use mine? Shaliba karuska palata. I said Genesis chapter 24, verse 63, right? I was even looking at this word. Um, it's to meditate. Yes. No, it, 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 there's a word that... It, don't you have the word pensively? pensively? Yeah. You see that word, pensively. Say pensively. I'm teaching you a new word. That word means to think to the point of daydreaming. It, 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 it's that level of engagement where you are so thinking about this, you enter a state of daydreaming. Now, if you understand daydreaming, you'll understand that it's daydreaming is the equivalent of being caught away. So, it is so engaging a scripture. So, if it is, I am pondering it, right? But I am communing with the scripture. I am talking to it and it's talking to me. You understand that, right? But I then go into a pensive methodology where I am now caught away into the scripture. Are you understanding me? So it is, it is a very intentional activity. Now, here's what the Bible says. It says he went out to meditate. Very important, right? It, it, his, the scriptures are giving us a... a a context of someone separating himself to meditate. Which means there is, you can meditate in the taxi, meditate, but you need to have times where you are separated to meditate on scripture. Are you understanding me? Where you remove yourself from the busyness of the world and put yourself in a place where it's you and just the scripture. That in this room, it's just me and Psalm 24. Or, not, let me not say Psalm 24. Let me say, uh, 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 you, you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. That means I enter a room. In that room, I am with that scripture. It is communion. That, Deuteronomy 827, is it? 818, right? So, I'm in a room with Deuteronomy 818. I am talking to Deuteronomy 818. Deuteronomy 818 is talking to me. You shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. That is so unto your fathers to give them. You shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. Be 
before he wants me to have money, he wants me to remember. That means for him, it's a done deal. He's just saying, Simpio, don't forget. Oh, I must remember. God, I will remember. God is not saying, he's not saying, he, 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 he has solid. if God says, remember, you know, there are people, they will give you a position, and so for them, it's a done deal. So God says, remember. Remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Wealth comes from God. Huh? Wealth comes from God. Wealth does not come from companies. Wealth does not come from a great job. Wealth does not come from numbers of businesses. Wealth comes from God. You see what I'm doing? I'm talking to the scripture. The scripture is talking to me. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. It takes power to be wealthy. Mm. Wealth is so heavy, you need power to carry it. You need power to, to carry it. You need power to protect it. You need power to sustain it. So, God doesn't just give me wealth. He gives me the power to guard it as well. Mm. Wealth is a power. Satan will fight it. There are powers that fight wealth. But he gives me power greater than it. Wealth is a power. Honestly, remember the Lord your God for you. He who gives you the power to get wealth. When that thing lands on me, I can get it. Yeah. Mm. I'm meditating. When that thing lands on me. If I'm, if I'm struggling to get it, something has not landed. So, I must put myself in a position. It's, it's the same thing. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you shall be a witness. The power makes you a witness. So if I can't get it, it means something has not landed. If something has not landed, what did Jesus say? Wait. Stay there. How do I wait? I meditate. I'm talking to it. It's talking to me. (sighs) But here's the thing. It is to muse, which is to eat. So I'm eating, right? To eat like the cow eats. To chew the cud. To break it down. To get its nutrients. Until those nutrients come inside of you. So the power to get wealth is in that scripture. So when I meditate on it, that power is released to me. I am sucking power. Oh God. One scripture. One scripture. You are busy with it. 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 You are busy busy with it, then you know what will happen. There will come a day where when you open Deuteronomy 8.18 you will be like Jesus. You will find the place where it is written about you. Oh God. Now, next time when you read it, it's no longer a scripture. It is written of me, oh God, to do thy will. So when you see it, you see yourself. You're like, oh, this is the this is now the prophecy of my life. Oh God. Are we okay? So I lock myself in that scripture. So I do it. I mean, if they had to tarry for a minimum of 10 days, that means I must tarry with one scripture, just a minimum of 10 days. Just thinking about it. Now, notice. Can we go back there? Can we go back to Genesis? All right. Can we read this scripture? <laughs> like this. Diabo one. One, two, three, go. Yeah, yeah, 
can you give me old King James? Give me old King James. I want to show us something. Yeah? Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Yeah? Yeah? Wait. When he meditated, notice what started to happen. He lifted up his eyes. To lift up means to rise from a place. That means there was a place where he was seeing. And suddenly when he meditated, he began to see from a higher plane. He lifted up his eyes. Abraham, lift up now thine eyes. So what is he doing? He's doing Genesis 13. Lift up now as far as your eyes can see. He lifted up his eyes and saw. Behold, the camels were coming. But, but, it's not just that the camels were coming. Look what happens. Look, next verse. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes and saw Isaac. What I'm looking for starts to see me as well. When I meditate, what I look for, what I am looking for, he meditates until what he wants sees him. That means meditation lifts me to the realm where I can be seen. You don't understand what I'm teaching you. <sighs> ah! He meditates, but he's seen. Oh, oh. It's, 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 it's one thing. He says, lift up nine thy eyes. They come to thee. You see, Isaiah is happening right here. But how is it happening? The man is meditating. When the man meditates, he sees from another plane. But it's like, it, it's the principle of the realm of the spirit. When you see them, they can see that suddenly you can see them. So when that happens, when you see as far as your eyes can see, I give it to you. Because you saw it, it gravitates to you. So many have not seen. Have you seen your prosperity? Have you seen your healing? Have you seen the rise of your business? Have you seen the rise of your ministry? Have you seen it? Have you seen? Have you cast with your eyes? Have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen with the eyes of the spirit? Have you seen? How do you see? It says he meditated. He meditated. That's why he told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from thine eyes, but, uh, from thy mouth, but you shall meditate day and night that you may observe. <sighs> huh? He says meditate until you can what? See. So meditation is the washing of the waters of Siloam. It's the washing of the, it says washing of the waters by the word. Can we take some more? Joshua 1 verse 8. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. All right. Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. What is the promise of meditation? Hmm? Okay, I need you to write down an equation. 
I need you to write down an equation. Then we go home. That's enough for one night, huh? I just need to meditate until I can see it. I just need to meditate until I can see it. If I see it, God can, can't deny it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what Jesus says these words. He says, I'm speaking in parables because if they hear, then he says if they can see, and he says if they can understand, I must do it. <laughs> the hearing people do. The seeing and the understanding is where people fail. And as I teach in this series, you'll see the Bible says these all died in faith. Having seen the promises, it says they saw them and they welcomed them and embraced them and they acknowledged that they are strangers. That means they have left this realm. Okay, equation. Né? Equation. Meditation, 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 consistent meditations, meditation, right? Consistent meditation equals seeing. Consistent meditation equals seeing. Right? It's not really an equation, but you know. Consistent meditation equals seeing. S E E I N G. Equals seeing. It's that word observe. Right? Seeing equals doing. Seeing equals what? Doing. Right? Then he says, doing. Brings prosperity and success. Actually, the Bible calls it good success. It equals what? Good success. So, what do you want right now? What do you want? You want this? And you want this. God says, I can give it to you. What must you do first? Meditate. What must you do first? Meditate. Hey, it didn't say do. <laughs> this is what? Meditate. Here's the power of it. It makes you do it. It, 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 it's a power that forces you into the doing. You know, today, I want to show you the power of meditation. Go home, right? And I want you to say, right, for 15 minutes, pray without ceasing. Just say it, for 15 minutes. <laughs> you will tap into another force of prayer you have never known. Because within the word, right? Within the word is exactly what it talks about. So the word on prayer will make you pray. The word on prophecy will make you prophesy. The word on prosperity will make you prophesy. It will infuse. The scripture says, 
Wealth is a power. You need the power to get it. Whether you are getting it, but you don't have the power to get it. Or I'm getting the money. The money says you don't have the power. You don't have the power to get me. <laughs> Right? Let's look at what David said. Psalm 1, the first psalm. Razaman, Rea has come. It's amazing that those who sing. I'm going home to die no more. I actually the ones who don't die. <laughs> we don't think at all, Pelana. If that if that song was a death sentence. A lot of people were supposed to be dead. Why is that? He's going home to die no more. That's why I have a very clear about who are in the casket. At least next time, when you see it, you see it with understanding. Kiri Pinanza immortality. I'm going home to die no more. Blessed is the man who walks not. In the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his joy, his joy is in the law of the Lord. Then he says, and in his law, he meditates day and night. Ah! I wrote down some stuff for you guys. Shalibra Kataya Kapariatus. Ah. 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 Mm. Mm. All right. So. Isaac's meditation was different from these guys' meditation. So, Isaac's meditation was communing, right? And pondering. But his mouth is still quiet. This one is different. He says, in his law, he meditates. It's the word haga. It's without, you cannot do this one without opening your mouth. It means to utter and to speak. But it means, right? It means, and, and, and here's how I found out the raw part, right? It means to, I am saying it, right? And I, a lot of people may have missed it by way of, they missed it by way of loudness. Uh -uh. It's not loud, loudness, it's intensity. It's intensity. It is it is, okay, let's look at, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So, if you say, if they shall obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure, you're not meditating because you must say it thinking about what you're saying. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. All I need to do is obey self. Am I obeying? You, you, you see, you're meditating. Am I obeying? Am I serving? If I'm obeying and I'm serving, that means my days are to be spent in prosperity. And my years in what? In pleasure. So the question is, am I doing my part? Now, you, 
you are doing this outwardly. You are talking the word outward. So, with the first one, you are doing it internally. This one, you are doing externally. So, you are speak. you are having a conversation outwardly. Then, you suddenly say it again. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. I obey God. Uh -huh. Do you realize what just happened? You begin to proclaim that you have come into the experience of the word of God. You identify yourself as the one who is the obedient one. So, if you are talking about some, you say, I am, I am the one who obeys God and I am the one who serves God. You know what you are doing? You are applying James chapter 3. The Bible says you go in the direction of your words. You are creating a structure for your life. Ah. Okay, let's read this. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Then he shall be like a what? So what is he doing when he's talking? He's planting himself. You see that? It is the planting of yourself in the scripture. Ah. Listen. Hey, 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 hey. So, nah. 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 So, nah. You become what you meditate. Right? And remember I said, when you meditate, you bring yourself into the experience of it. So you say, I obey and so, so it's no longer a scripture, it is you. Huh? Then what does the Bible say? The sower sows the word. So you sow yourself in that reality. You plant yourself in that reality. So you are Whatever you meditate yourself, you are planting yourself in it. Ah. You, you are either planting yourself in life or you are planting yourself in death. Then he says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Then he says, he brings forth. Are you seeing the laws of fruit? He brings forth result in his time. So he always has a result. Whose leaf also shall not what wither. There's a scripture. Can we open? Just just other scriptures. Jeremiah. 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 Twenty nine five, twenty nine five, Jeremiah twenty nine five, Jeremiah twenty nine five. Build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit. Next verse. Take wives, beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to their husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may increase there and not diminish. Give me, give me New King James. Give me New King James. Do that scripture. Uh, can you King James? Give me NIV. Give, give me NIV. Uh, 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 NIV. Aha. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. There are such things in scripture. Where you are forbidden by God to decrease. Jeremiah 30 19 there is a forbidding of decreasing well God I forbid you from failing Ah. from them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing I will add to their number they will not be decreased that's what he was saying in the book of Psalms. His leaf also shall not wither. He will not go down. I don't go down. I heard all your depots say, our ministry 
has never known a better yesterday. I know, it's okay. <laughs> it says, our ministry has never known a better yesterday. It says, there's nothing you can look back in our past that's better than our today. Ever. Say, I shall not decrease. I, shall not decrease. I increase only. I, increase only. I, shall I shall not decrease. I increase only. I, increase. I shall not decrease. I, shall I increase only. only. I, shall I shall not decrease. You're not meditating. You're still, you, you're still parakeeting what I am saying. Think about everything in your life. Say, I increase only. I shall not decrease. I increase only. I shall not decrease. I am forbidden from decreasing. My environment rejects decreasing. My environment welcomes increase. Everything about me is increasing. Everything about me is enlarging. <laughs> I said this to Pastor Jeff. I said to the bishop. I said, "This is our best year." I said, "What will happen this year will far outweigh what we have ever seen." I saw it in the scriptures. You shall increase. You shall not decrease. I will not diminish. My anointing has never gotten lower. The grace of God in my life has never gotten lower. I am more favored today than I have ever been in my entire life. I saw it. I have seen in the scriptures. Increase only. There is a law of increase that forbids me from seeing decrease. I have seen it. I have seen. What have you seen? Jeremiah, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? A lot of you, you are seeing, you're like, this is a bad year. This is a, you are not seeing. You are not seeing. You are not seeing with the eyes of the spirit. What do you see? He said, you shall increase. You shall not decrease. What do you see? And you're like, but God, he says, what do you see? bank account naturally he says what do you see what do you see then he says you have seen well i will perform what you saw you don't hear me he's going to perform what you saw so what do you see he's not performing what's happening he's performing what you are seeing what do you see what do you see then he says as far as your eyes can see i will give it to you unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or what imagine what do you see he says what they have seen shall not be forbidden from them and what do you see what are you seeing in your business prophet Zolido, what are you seeing in your ministry what are you seeing what are you seeing my thinking is coming what are you seeing Prophet, what are you seeing? Oh God, I see. I see. What are you seeing, Prophet? I will perform what you see. Oh, it's the month of May. Oh, naturally you didn't have a job. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Naturally, there's no job. Naturally, there's no business. Naturally, there's no income. Prophet, what do you see? What do you see? If God can perform, he says the power will perform your imaginations. What do you see? What do you see? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not creating some new doctrine. It's there. This is the power of meditation. He told Timothy, he says meditate upon these things. Throw yourself into it. You say, I have thrown myself into increase. Oh... I have thrown myself. I took Simpiwe. I tied him up and I threw him in increase. He is bound in a place called increase. If you are looking for him, you will find him in a location called increase. What do you see? What do you live? I live in increase. 
Where is that? It's a place I live in. That's why I can show you scriptures. I'm like, let me show you the dimension I live in. I live in a, in a strange dimension. It's called the foolishness of faith. It is the stupidity of faith. The more I release, the more comes. The more I release, the more comes. The more I release, the more comes. It's the dimension I live in. The dimension I live in is the dimension of releasing. We live by release in this dimension. You're like, naturally, it does not make sense. Of course, of course, it is the wisdom of God hidden for our glory. He says, he says, you're profiting. Your progress will be evident to all. Say, Progress cannot be hidden. Say progress cannot be hidden. Say results cannot be hidden. He says your results shall be evident to all. He, 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 he tells you, you want all to see you. Ah! You see, a lot of you, you are modest. But God said, let your light so shine. He knows within every human being, there is a desire to be seen. He says, meditate. Give yourself wholly into this thing. Everybody will see. The sinner will see. There is a dimension where sinners say, hey my God. There is a dimension where sinners see the God in you. They are like you. You walk with God. Not because you are saved. Because of your results. You have so meditated this thing that no boss, no fallen angel, no demon can resist your progress. There is a progress that cannot be ignored. And he says, I can give it to you. Can we stand up in the presence of God? I want you to begin to speak the word of God. Begin to speak the word of God. Shata kapara. Begin to speak scripture. I don't want you to speak in tongues. Speak one scripture. I want you to begin to mention it right now. Begin to mention it right now. Begin to mention that scripture. Begin to mention that scripture. Mention that scripture. Find that scripture and mention it. What do you see? What do you katos katai katai kevete ketele kere ketele ke suvati kiti akarus kapakatala parus kaparakata ya jate na jata ya jata. We've got a couple more minutes. To meditate, like, like Joshua and like David, means to speak and increase intensity, not necessarily sound. You increase intensity because of the thoughts that you are conscious of. Intensity, not sound. Sound may increase. But it increases because intensity was being increased. It is to speak one thing, increasing the intensity. It carries the idea of hitting with greater, with greater strength. Hitting with greater strength. So we're going to do that. We're going to meditate. I'm going to show you how to do this. Right? How to do this. That if you would learn it, you can do this. You can do this. Right? You can do this in a place of absolute quietness right in a place of quietness and you can say the scripture says it says then samuel then samuel took a stone and set it up between mizpah and shen and called its name ebenezer he says thus far the lord has helped us ebenezer means god is my help you see that it means god is my helper so it's not you see ebenezer it's not something you say at the end of the year. It's a consciousness of the Holy Ghost in your spirit. Ebenezer is the presence of the Holy Ghost. So, as you meditate, you wake up, it's morning, you say, Ebenezer, the Lord is my helper. I don't know what help I'm going to need today. But Ebenezer, the Lord is my help. Ebenezer. The Lord is my help. Ebenezer. The Lord is my help. Ebenezer. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my help at work. 
The Lord is my help in business. The Lord is my help in finance. The Lord is my help. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. I am helped today. I am supported today. Ebenezer makes men help me. Ebenezer. 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 Therefore, I cannot say I lack help because I've got Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Help. Help. So, I wake up and I say, today I don't know what is going on, but help has come. He says, likewise, the spirit also helps our limitations. I don't care the limitation today, but I am helped. We're going to say this together. Say, Ebenezer. My help has come. Say, Ebenezer. My help has come. Ebenezer. I am helped. I have help. I have assistance. I have support. Ebenezer. Now you're going to do this. You, you see what I just showed you? You're going to do this. You're going to meditate this right now. You're going to say it over... With understanding of your own life. With understanding of your own life. A lot of you are looking for someone to help you. But Ebenezer is there. Ebenezer is there. It's that you have not seen him. You have not seen Ebenezer. Now I want you to meditate. You, you need this. If, if, you can, if you can get this. If you can get this. If you can get this. You will never struggle. Because the world requires help. The world, I mean, the first thing men needed in a perfect world is help. Oh God. Help is something that is also needed in a perfect world. God said it is not good that the man be alone. I will make him a helper in a perfect world. He needed Ebenezer. You need Ebenezer. Every day you need Ebenezer. Begin to meditate. Begin to meditate. I need you to... Atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus, for there's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible.